Welcome to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Continuing Medical Education Podcast. Join us each week to discuss the most pressing topics in cardiology and gain valuable insights that can be directly applied to your practice. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Kopetsky, a preventive cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. It's my great pleasure today to be speaking with Dr. Vlad Vasily, who is also a preventive cardiologist and has a dual appointment here in cardiology and also in our cardiovascular uh, laboratory. So welcome, Vlad. Thank you very much, Dr. Kopetsky. I appreciate me being here today. Well, I'm very excited about this topic, about ceramides. In ceramides, we, are, we use quite a bit here. Could you tell us what are ceramides? Ceramides are sphingolipids. Um, they are um, uh, lipids that are ubiquitously expressed. They are present in all cell membranes. Some of these ceramides have been associated with um, uh, risk of atherosclerotic disease in patients with known uh, coronary artery disease. Our group here at Mayo Clinic and others have also demonstrated um, that ceramides can predict uh, negative events in patients without known uh, coronary artery disease. We have developed, validated, and have used ceramides now for a couple of years um, as a simple blood test, which we call the ceramide score. Uh, one of the advantages of using the score as a predictor biomarker is that it takes into account the uh, lipid pathway, the inflammatory pathway, um, and also the thrombotic pathway. All these pathways are uh, known to be involved in plaque formation and plaque rupture. While some of the risk stratification biomarkers look at specific pathways, for example, high sensitivity CRP at the inflammatory pathway and um, the reputed LDL at the lipid pathway, the uh, ceramide score assesses all these pathways in a very comprehensive manner. Therefore, I believe that uh, ceramides um, are really a robust biomarker for assessing risk. So you say assess risk. What specific, and you mentioned that it's both primary and secondary risk. What specific events you know, would it, what does it predict? So we are looking at atherosclerotic events. We're talking about myocardial infarction, stroke. We're talking about also about death. Okay. Now, who do we recommend that should be uh, have their ceramides checked? Um, I use ceramides in patients that are at intermediate risk. For example, patients that uh, are assessed by the ASCVD risk calculators and uh, have a uh, risk uh, intermediate. I use the ceramide score in a similar way to using other risk stratification tools such as the high sensitivity CRP or the coronary calcium score. The uh, ceramide score is an accurate, reproducible uh, test. It is inexpensive and recently has been approved to be reimbursed by uh, insurance companies. Um, as a personal experience, it is also uh, user-friendly and very easy to interpret by us physicians. Um, additionally, it motivates patients to continue the interventions I recommend. So have you then, you'll draw ceramides, you'll treat the patient, have them change their lifetime, uh, check lipids again, maybe check ceramides again. And how do you put those together when you explain it to a patient? Um, so one huge advantage of uh, testing the ceramide score um, is that it is modifiable. I use it as a baseline uh, when I assess the patient and then as a follow-up. Um, Mediterranean diet, um, aerobic, uh, exercise training, and um, um, some lipid-lowering agents, some statins, all have been studied and have been shown to uh, modify to reduce the ceramide level and ceramide score. This is important because lowering the score with uh, various interventions show both the uh, provider and the patient um, the decreased risk. Um, it also motivates patients that they are on the right track uh, with um, healthy lifestyle choices and or pharmacologic interventions. And you mentioned Mediterranean diet. In the PREDIMED study, all the benefit was seen in the patients that had high ceramides at baseline, so it's very interesting. How, do you ever have patients and you'll treat their lipids and their lipids go down but their ceramide score stays up and what does that mean if that's the case? 
Um, and this is a very good question because um, it happens. It's, it doesn't happen, I wouldn't say it happens very often, but sometimes it does happen. Um, as I mentioned previously, ceramides look at different pathways. Um, and so you may target one pathway by, redu by reducing the lipids, for example, if they're elevated, but um, not necessarily the other two pathways that are, have been involved in plaque formation. Therefore, there is a residual risk that uh, um, at follow-up, ceramides would, give, would provide additional information. That's fascinating. And then how often or how quickly will it change? Will ceramides change? You know, we know that lipids will change within a month if you start them on a statin. I usually retest ceramides at the same time when I retest lipids. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think three months is a very reasonable uh, cutoff uh, time point when we uh, retest ceramides. Sometimes, depending on the situations, I retest them at six months or one year. Um, and, and again, the purpose is just to show that that score went down which gives reassurance to me as a provider, but also to the patient that uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're on the right track. And uh, you mentioned how easy it is to use the score. So we draw the patient's blood, we, we get a score here at Mayo, and it is quite easy. Tell us about the, you know, this zero to 12 scale. And Yes, um, this is a scale that um, gives a number, a certain number to the patient, and that number will place the patient in a risk group from low to very high risk group. And depending on that, we may uh, do certain interventions, but um, it is very user friendly in the sense that it just places the patient in a bucket of risk from low risk to very high risk. So it is um, uh, very, very easy to interpret and use. Now, you also mentioned uh, a comparison to CRP. You know, we know that CRP is not that specific for inflammation causes. It may be vascular, maybe non-vascular. What do we know about ceramides and them going up? Um, ceramides um, are also involved in the inflammatory pathway. Um, and so um, when you have elevation in ceramides, you can look at specific uh, ceramide species that are involved more in the inflammatory pathway and see whether uh, inflammation is more prevalent in driving the score up. Uh, but um, for the purpose of using the score, again, the score is very comprehensive and, and looks at all three pathways, inflammatory pathway, thrombotic pathway, and lipid pathway. Uh, but um, when we look at specific ceramide species that compound the score, we can actually pinpoint uh, to uh, specific ceramides that are associated with inflammation, for example. Oh, well, that's fascinating. The, um, the issue of lipoprotein A comes up and what uh, we don't really have a good way to measure lipoprotein A. Does ceramides help us with finding out how maybe aggressive or how atherogenic or thrombotic lipoprotein A is in an individual patient? I'm not aware of any data um, that correlates um, ceramides or different ceramide species with a lipoprotein A a particle or, or uh, size of the particle. Um, so um, I, I generally test uh, lipoprotein A and ceramides in patients that are uh, at intermediate risk. Uh, I taste both um, uh, biomarkers. Okay. And so we don't really know if, if everybody with high lipoprotein A in mass uh, measurement uh, may have a high or low uh, ceramide score. Has that really been looked at? or? No, I don't think we've looked at um, uh, that particular question. What we do know is that um, the uh, lipoprotein A mass car carries a certain uh, value of the total LDL. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if the LDL is elevated, that could be because um, it is intrinsically elevated, but it could also represent that a certain mm -hmm. component of that LDL it come or derives from lipoprotein A. In turn, because LDL is elevated, whether it's elevated intrinsically or it's elevated because of um, uh, elevation LDL and lipoprotein A, that may affect the ceramide score because ceramides, again, they, they're looking at the lipid pathway mm -hmm. in addition to the other pathways. Very good. And then finally, you mentioned that the primary and secondary prevention is, and the risk uh, that it predicts, ceramides predict, is at the ta same time scale for primary prevention events versus secondary prevention events, or is there a different time scale involved? 
Uh, I believe the timescales um, are very similar um, because when we do, we see changes in ceramides um, relatively quickly. Um, there's a recent study that looked at stroke, for example, um, stroke patients, um, and they measured ceramides before and after they started a statin, and they, um, they showed a statistically significant difference in uh, statins at two weeks after initiation, uh, in, um, sorry, in ceramides at two weeks after initiation of statins. So therefore, I think um, um, any change that you would do for primary or secondary prevention would manifest relatively fast. And when you say relatively fast, are we talking about event reduction? You know, we have a risk predictor for 10 years that the ACC AHA uses. What about the ceramides? When do they predict risk? Ceramides predict risk at short term, at could be um, a couple of months, but also a long term. Most of the studies have looked at long term, but there's a, a few studies that also looked at short term. And long term being three to five years or? Yes, long term, um, um, several years. Very good. Well, Vlad, this has been a fascinating discussion, and uh, you know, I can say from personal experience, you've been a great addition to our cardiovascular prevention clinic and to our relationship with the cardiovascular uh, laboratory both. So thank you very much for joining us on this discussion. Thank you very much, Dr. Kutetsky. Thank you for joining us today. Feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions about the podcast by emailing cvselfstudy at mayo.edu. Be sure to subscribe to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular CME podcast on your favorite platform and tune in each week to explore today's most pressing cardiology topics with your colleagues at Mayo Clinic.